Greetings, my name is Chad Smith and I'm a Technical Alliance Architect here at Teradici. I want to give you a demonstration of Teradici running in AWS, specifically highlighting PC over IP Ultra on G4 instances. I also want to familiarize you with our connection broker and how to integrate that into your environment. But before I get started, I wanted to share the URL to our GitHub repository where we manage all the scripts used to build this demonstration. I highly encourage these scripts if you're planning on managing more than a handful of workstations. They incorporate security, networking, scalability, and cost management best practices. Let's review a diagram of this environment and call out some of its components. Today I'll be illustrating a single AZ deployment but there is flexibility in how these services can be deployed and our scripts are designed to address various configurations. We support deployments in multiple AZs and regions with optional load balanced brokers to address both scale and high availability. It can manage workstations on premises and instances in AWS, providing a means to swing licenses in either direction. Digging a little deeper into this architecture, I wanted to highlight the Cloud Access Manager. The Cloud Access Manager is actually comprised of two components. First is the Cloud Access Manager Service, which is a licensing portal managed by Teradici. Second is the Cloud Access Connector, which resides in the customer's environment, enabling the brokering of PC over IP connections to remote clients. The Cloud Access Manager acts as an access hub. It provides user authentication via Active Directory with entitlements to assigned instances, even supporting MFA functionality. This service eliminates the need for dedicated VPNs by providing NAT services for external users. Finally, Cloud Access Manager allows for end-user power management an idle resource shutdown of instances in AWS. Let's log into the management console to assign myself some instances. As a minister, I've logged into the Cloud Access Manager. There is already an AWS deployment created and tied to an IAM role that allows users to start up and shut down instances through the PC over IP client. The AWS deployment is also connected to Active Directory via LDAP-S. Any connector will utilize this domain for authentication and entitlement. Finally, we have a Cloud Access connector in US West 1A. We can view its health and internal and external IP addresses. Remember that external IP will need it later on. Now let's move to the Workstation tab. Because this is a fresh installation, I'm going to add an AWS instance to be managed by the Cloud Access Manager. By selecting AWS as a provider and the region where the connector is installed, I now have the ability to assign the instance to an Active Directory user. Now that entitlement is complete, let's fire up a piece over IP client and continue the demonstration. Okay, I'll log into my home computer and have a couple items open on my desktop. First, I have a Wellcome tablet attached. Second is a website that shows the latency to US West 1, which seems to be around 30 milliseconds. This latency is too high for the tablet to be set up as a bridge device, so I'll go with local termination instead. This method offloads the processing of the tablet on my home computer first and will allow for a very responsive experience. I would go with a bridge connection if latency was very low, mm, say 10 milliseconds, and a device required it to function. The rest of the trade-offs are kind of out of scope for the rest of this demonstration, but the main takeaway is that PC over IP offers flexibility in the way that USB devices can be redirected. These options allow us to support a wide range of tablets and panels under various conditions. Also, the PC over IP client application is open on my desktop. I will use it to establish a connection to our instance in AWS. Remember the external IP address of the Cloud Access Connector? I'll use it as the IP in the host address field to connect to the broker. Optionally, I can fill in the connection name, which should be the name of the AZ the Cloud Access Connector resides in. Note, 
I used the self-signed certificate in preparing this environment. Normally in production environments, you would use a certificate authority and you wouldn't receive this message. For illustration purposes, I have the EC2 console open too. This will show the power management integration into AWS and how it starts instances. I'll log in as the user that was entitled in the previous step. There will be a slight delay as the instance is being powered on, which is shown by the instance status in the EC2 console. Also, the PC over IP client UI provides us notifications as well. Using the PC over IP client on my home PC, I'm now logged onto the host system that resides in AWS. To get full functionality of my Wacom tablet, I still have to attach it to the host system. To do so, I select Connections and USB Devices in the Teradici menu. The tablet is detected as a HID device, so I also have to check the box to view these types of devices. Once it becomes visible, I just need to connect it to the host. Here's a little pro tip. I can avoid this step in the future by using a PID vid auto forward handle on the client's PC over IP executable. Now you can see that the Wacom tablet is available for use on a host system. To illustrate the tablet's functionality like pressure sensitivity and hotkeys, let's jump into the application and utilize these features. As you can see, pressure sensitivity is being registered on the remote application. Also, Wacom specific hotkeys are properly mapped. The experience for the artist is very comparable to them interacting with a workstation under their desk. But in this case, this workstation is almost 600 miles away. Changing gears a little, let's focus on the visual enhancements of PC over IP Ultra. If you're involved in composition, animation, or editorial workflows, and you're trying to do it remotely, you'll quickly realize how important these features are. So let's jump into it. First, Teradici has enhanced and expanded the encoders it uses to take better advantage of multi-CPU cores and GPUs of modern day systems. This translates into getting more pixel pushing power out of your existing hardware. I'll show you what this equates to. My host is running a full motion video at 1080p, 60 frames per second with a high pixel change rate. I can measure this pixel throughput with a statistic called megapixels per second in this graph. I recorded a couple 50 megapixel spikes when I ran the video. To put this in perspective, PC over IP Ultra can achieve over 500 megapixels per second which equates to driving multiple monitors and 4K UHD workloads at a very impressive frame rate. Second, PC over IP Ultra has a build to lossless feature that allows the encoder to dynamically adjust according to bandwidth constraints. As soon as the image stops, the encoder will build the image back to the exact reproduction of the RGB signal, exactly as a GPU on a host outputted it. Artists that work in the color spectrum need to ensure the quality and color accuracy of the image they're seeing is the exact representation of the host's GPU. Finally, Peace over IP Ultra supports a full spectrum of image complexity, but also at a very high fidelity. The fine detail content like wireframes, text, anti-alias objects, or even icons on a display are all areas that need to be reproduced at a high fidelity. Otherwise, you end up with image artifacts, smears across the screen that can lead to eye strain and even fatigue. Peace over IP Ultra supports Chroma subsampling 444 on 8-bit color depth at a variety of resolutions. I'm illustrating an application that requires high fidelity reproduction in order for the artist to properly interact with the application. Note, the wireframe model is not artifacting or smearing as I move it back and forth. This is what I'm referring to as a high fidelity reproduction. Well, that was a whirlwind tour of Teradici running in AWS. Thank you for your time and attention.